The Old Testament abbreviated OT is the first part of Christian Bibles, based primarily upon the Hebrew Bible or Tanakh, a collection of ancient religious writings by the Israelites believed by most Christians and religious Jews to be the sacred word of God. The second part of the Christian Bible is the New Testament. The books that comprise the Old Testament canon, as well as their order and names, differ between Christian denominations. The Catholic canon comprises 46 books, and the canons of the Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox churches comprise up to 51 books and the most common Protestant canon comprises 39 books. The 39 books in common to all the Christian canons correspond to the 24 books of the Tanakh, with some differences of order, and there are some differences in text. The additional number reflects the splitting of several texts Kings, Samuel and Chronicles, Ezra Nehemiah and the Minor Prophets into separate books in Christian Bibles. The books which are part of a Christian Old Testament but which are not part of the Hebrew canon are sometimes described as deuterocanonical. In general, Protestant Bibles do not include the deuterocanonical books in their canon, but some versions of Anglican and Lutheran Bibles place such books in a separate section called Apocrypha. These extra books are ultimately derived from the earlier Greek Septuagint collection of the Hebrew Scriptures and are also Jewish in origin. Some are also contained in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Old Testament consists of many distinct books by various authors produced over a period of centuries. Christians traditionally divide the Old Testament into four sections, one, the first five books or Pentateuch Torah, two, the history books telling the history of the Israelites, from their conquest of Canaan to their defeat and exile in Babylon, three, the poetic and wisdom books, dealing, in various forms, with questions of good and evil in the world, and four, the books of the biblical prophets, warning of the consequences of turning away from God. Topic. Content. The Old Testament contains 39 Protestant, 46 Catholic, or more Orthodox and other books, divided, very broadly, into the Pentateuch Torah, the historical books, the wisdom books and the prophets. Topic. Table The table uses the spellings and names present in modern editions of the Christian Bible, such as the Catholic New American Bible Revised Edition and the Protestant Revised Standard Version and English Standard Version. The spelling and names in both the 1609-10 Douay Old Testament and in the 1582 Rheims New Testament and the 1749 revision by Bishop Chaloner the edition currently in print used by many Catholics, and the source of traditional Catholic spellings in English and in the Septuagint differ from those spellings and names used in modern editions which are derived from the Hebrew Masoretic text. For the Orthodox canon, Septuagint titles are provided in parentheses when these differ from those editions. For the Catholic canon, the Douaic titles are provided in parentheses when these differ from those editions. Likewise, the King James Version references some of these books by the traditional spelling when referring to them in the New Testament, such as Esaias for Isaiah. In the spirit of ecumenism more recent Catholic translations e.g. the New American Bible, Jerusalem Bible, and ecumenical translations used by Catholics, such as the Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition use the same standardized King James Version spellings and names as Protestant Bibles e.g. First Chronicles as opposed to the Douaic 1 Paralipomenon, 1-2 Samuel and 1-2 Kings instead of 1-4 Kings in those books which are universally considered canonical, the protocanonicals. The Talmud the Jewish commentary on the scriptures in Bava Batra 14b gives a different order for the books in Nevi'im and Ketuvim. This order is also cited in Mishnah Torah Hilchot Sefer Torah 715. The order of the books of the Torah is universal through all denominations of Judaism and Christianity. The disputed books, included in one canon but not in others, are often called the Biblical Apocrypha, a term that is sometimes used specifically to describe the books in the Catholic and Orthodox canons that are absent from the Jewish Masoretic text and most modern Protestant Bibles. Catholics, following the canon of Trent 1546, describe these books as deuterocanonical, while Greek Orthodox Christians, following the Synod of Jerusalem 1672, use the traditional name of anagignoskomena, meaning, that which is to be read. They are present in a few historic Protestant versions. The German Luther Bible included such books, as did the English 1611 King James Version. Empty table cells indicate that a book is absent from that canon. 
Several of the books in the Eastern Orthodox canon are also found in the appendix to the Latin Vulgate, formerly the official Bible of the Roman Catholic Church. Composition The first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Book of Numbers and Deuteronomy, reached their present form in the Persian period 538 BC, and their authors were the elite of exilic returnees who controlled the temple at that time. The books of Joshua, Judges, Samuel and Kings follow, forming a history of Israel from the conquest of Canaan to the siege of Jerusalem c. 587 BC. There is a broad consensus among scholars that these originated as a single work the so-called Deuteronomistic history during the Babylonian exile of the 6th century BC. The two books of Chronicles cover much the same material as the Pentateuch and Deuteronomistic history and probably date from the 4th century BC. Chronicles, and Ezra-Nehemiah, were probably finished during the 3rd century BC. Catholic and Orthodox Old Testaments contain two Catholic Old Testament to four Orthodox books of Maccabees, written in the 2nd and 1st centuries BC. These history books make up around half the total content of the Old Testament. Of the remainder, the books of the various prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the twelve minor prophets, were written between the 8th and 6th centuries BC, with the exceptions of Jonah and Daniel, which were written much later. The wisdom Books, Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Song of Solomon, have various dates. Proverbs possibly was completed by the Hellenistic time 332 BC, though containing much older material as well. Job completed by the 6th century BC, Ecclesiastes by the 3rd century BC. Topic. Themes God is consistently depicted as the one who created the world. Although the God of the Old Testament is not consistently presented as the only God who exists, he is always depicted as the only God whom Israel is to worship, or the one true God, that only Yahweh is Almighty, and both Jews and Christians have always interpreted the Bible both the Old and New. Testaments as an affirmation of the oneness of Almighty God, the Old Testament stresses the special relationship between God and his chosen people, Israel, but includes instructions for proselytes as well. This relationship is expressed in the biblical covenant contract between the two, received by Moses. The law codes in books such as Exodus and especially Deuteronomy are the terms of the contract. Israel swears faithfulness to God, and God swears to be Israel's special protector and supporter. Further themes in the Old Testament include salvation, redemption, divine judgment, obedience and disobedience, faith and faithfulness, among others. Throughout there is a strong emphasis on ethics and ritual purity, both of which God demands, although some of the prophets and wisdom writers seem to question this, arguing that God demands social justice above purity, and perhaps does not even care about purity at all. The Old Testament's moral code enjoins fairness, intervention on behalf of the vulnerable, and the duty of those in power to administer justice righteously. It forbids murder, bribery and corruption, deceitful trading, and many sexual misdemeanors. All morality is traced back to God, who is the source of all goodness. The problem of evil plays a large part in the Old Testament. The problem the Old Testament authors faced was that a good God must have had just reason for bringing disaster, meaning notably, but not only, the Babylonian exile upon his people. The theme is played out, with many variations, in books as different as the histories of Kings and Chronicles, the prophets like Ezekiel and Jeremiah, and in the wisdom books like Job and Ecclesiastes. Formation The process by which scriptures became canons and Bibles was a long one, and its complexities account for the many different Old Testaments which exist today. Timothy H. Lim, a professor of Hebrew Bible and Second Temple Judaism at the University of Edinburgh, identifies the Old Testament as a collection of authoritative texts of apparently divine origin that went through a human process of writing and editing. He states that it is not a magical book, nor was it literally written by God and passed to mankind. 
By about the 5th century BC Jews saw the five books of the Torah the Old Testament Pentateuch as having authoritative status, by the 2nd century BC the prophets had a similar status, although without quite the same level of respect as the Torah. Beyond that, the Jewish scriptures were fluid, with different groups seeing authority in different books. Greek Hebrew texts commenced to be translated into Greek in Alexandria in about 280 and continued until about 130 BC. These early Greek translations, supposedly commissioned by Ptolemy Philadelphus, were called the Septuagint Latin, 70, from the supposed number of translators involved hence its abbreviation, LXX. This Septuagint remains the basis of the Old Testament in the Eastern Orthodox Church. It varies in many places from the Masoretic text and includes numerous books no longer considered canonical in some traditions: 1 and 2 Esdras, Judith, Tobit, 3 and 4 Maccabees, the Book of Wisdom, Sirach, and Baruch. Early modern biblical criticism typically explained these variations as intentional or ignorant corruptions by the Alexandrian scholars, but most recent scholarship holds it is simply based on early source texts differing from those later used by the Masoretes in their work. The Septuagint was originally used by Hellenized Jews whose knowledge of Greek was better than Hebrew. But the texts came to be used predominantly by Gentile converts to Christianity and by the early church as its scripture, Greek being the lingua franca of the early church. The three most acclaimed early interpreters were Aquila of Sinop, Symmachus the Ebionite, and Theodotion. In his Hexapla, Origen placed his edition of the Hebrew text beside its transcription in Greek letters and four parallel translations, Aquilas, Symmachus's, the Septuagints, and Theodotion's. The so-called fifth and sixth editions were two other Greek translations supposedly miraculously discovered by students outside the towns of Jericho and Nicopolis. These were added to Origen's Octopla. In 331, Constantine I commissioned Eusebius to deliver 50 Bibles for the Church of Constantinople. Athanasius recorded Alexandrian scribes around 340 preparing Bibles for Constance. Little else is known, though there is plenty of speculation. For example, it is speculated that this may have provided motivation for canon lists, and that Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus are examples of these Bibles. Together with the Peshitta and Codex Alexandrinus, these are the earliest extant Christian Bibles. There is no evidence among the canons of the First Council of Nicaea of any determination on the canon, however, Jerome 347 in his Prologue to Judith, makes the claim that the Book of Judith was found by the Nicene Council to have been counted among the number of the sacred scriptures. <inaudible> Latin In Western Christianity or Christianity in the western half of the Roman Empire, Latin had displaced Greek as the common language of the early Christians, and in 382 AD Pope Damasus I commissioned Jerome, the leading scholar of the day, to produce an updated Latin Bible to replace the Vetus Latina, which was a Latin translation of the Septuagint. Jerome's work, called the Vulgate, was a direct translation from Hebrew, since he argued for the superiority of the Hebrew texts in correcting the Septuagint on both philological and theological grounds. His Vulgate Old Testament became the standard Bible used in the Western Church, specifically as the Sixto Clementine Vulgate, while the churches in the East continued, and still continue, to use the Septuagint. Jerome, however, in the Vulgate's prologues describes some portions of books in the Septuagint not found in the Hebrew Bible as being non canonical, he called them apocrypha. For Baruch, he mentions by name in his prologue to Jeremiah and notes that it is neither read nor held among the Hebrews, but does not explicitly call it apocryphal or not in the canon. The Synod of Hippo in 393, followed by the Council of Carthage 397 and the Council of Carthage 419, may be the first council that explicitly accepted the first canon which includes the books that did not appear in the Hebrew Bible. The councils were under significant influence of Augustine of Hippo, who regarded the canon as already closed. Protestant 
In the 16th century, the Protestant reformers sided with Jerome, yet although most Protestant Bibles now have only those books that appear in the Hebrew Bible, they have them in the order of the Greek Bible. Rome then officially adopted a canon, the Canon of Trent, which is seen as following Augustine's Carthaginian Councils or the Council of Rome, and includes most, but not all, of the Septuagint. Three Ezra and three and four Maccabees are excluded. The Anglicans, after the English Civil War, adopted a compromise position, restoring the 39 articles and keeping the extra books that were excluded by the Westminster Confession of Faith, but only for private study and for reading in churches, while Lutherans kept them for private study, gathered in an appendix as biblical apocrypha. Other versions While the Hebrew, Greek and Latin versions of the Hebrew Bible are the best known Old Testaments, there were others. At much the same time as the Septuagint was being produced, translations were being made into Aramaic, the language of Jews living in Palestine and the Near East and likely the language of Jesus. These are called the Aramaic Targums, from a word meaning, translation, and were used to help Jewish congregations understand their scriptures. For Aramaic Christians there was a Syriac translation of the Hebrew Bible called the Peshitta, as well as versions in Coptic the everyday language of Egypt in the first Christian centuries, descended from ancient Egyptian, Ethiopic for use in the Ethiopian Church, one of the oldest Christian churches, Armenian Armenia was the first to adopt Christianity as its official religion, and Arabic. Topic. Christian theology Christianity is based on the belief that the historical Jesus is also the Christ, as in the Confession of Peter. This belief is in turn based on Jewish understandings of the meaning of the Hebrew term Messiah, which, like the Greek, Christ, means, anointed. In the Hebrew scriptures it describes a king anointed with oil on his accession to the throne, he becomes, the Lord's anointed, or Yahweh's anointed. By the time of Jesus, some Jews expected that a flesh and blood descendant of David, the son of David, would come to establish a real Jewish kingdom in Jerusalem, instead of the Roman province. Others stressed the Son of Man, a distinctly other worldly figure who would appear as a judge at the end of time, and some harmonized the two by expecting a this worldly messianic kingdom which would last for a set period and be followed by the other worldly age or world to come. Some thought the Messiah was already present, but unrecognized due to Israel's sins. Some thought that the Messiah would be announced by a forerunner, probably Elijah, as promised by the prophet Malachi, whose book now ends the Old Testament and precedes Mark's account of John the Baptist. None predicted a Messiah who suffers and dies for the sins of all the people. The story of Jesus' death therefore involved a profound shift in meaning from the tradition of the Old Testament, the name, Old Testament reflects Christianity's understanding of itself as the fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecy of a new covenant which is similar to testament and often conflated to replace the existing covenant between God and Israel Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 the emphasis however has shifted from Judaism's understanding of the covenant as a racially or tribally based contract between God and Jews to one between God and any person of faith who is in Christ Topic. See also Abrogation of Old Covenant Laws Biblical and Quranic Narratives Book of Job in Byzantine Illuminated Manuscripts Books of the Bible Covenant Biblical Expounding of the Law Timeline of Genesis Patriarchs Law and Gospel List of Ancient Legal Codes List of Hebrew Bible Manuscripts Marcion of Sinop Non-canonical books referenced in the Bible Quotations from the Hebrew Bible in the New Testament Supersessionism Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Banstra, Barry L. 2004, Reading the Old Testament, An Introduction to the Hebrew Bible, Wadsworth, ISBN 978-0-495-39105-0 Barton, John 1997, How the Bible Came to Be, Westminster John Knox Press, ISBN 978-0-664-25785-9 2001. Introduction to the Old Testament. 
In Muddyman, John, Barton, John, Bible Commentary, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-875500-5 Blankensop, Joseph The Pentateuch. In Barton, John, The Cambridge Companion to Biblical Interpretation, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-48593-7 Bowett, Lawrence 1984, Reading the Old Testament, An Introduction, Paulist Press, ISBN 978-0-8091-2631-6 Brettler, Mark Zvi 2005, How to Read the Bible, Jewish Publication Society, ISBN 978-0-8276-1001-9 Boltman, Christoph 2001, Deuteronomy in Barton, John, Muddyman, John, Oxford Bible Commentary, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-875500-5 Coggins, Richard J. 2003. One and Second Chronicles. In Dunn, James D. G., Rogerson, John William, Commentary on the Bible, Eerdmans, ISBN 978-0-8028-3711-0 Crenshaw, James L. 2010, Old Testament Wisdom, An Introduction, Westminster John Knox Press, ISBN 978-0-664-23459-1 Davies, Guy Introduction to the Pentateuch. In Barton, John, Oxford Bible Commentary, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-875500-5 Dines, Jennifer M. 2004. The Septuagint. Continuum, ISBN 978-0-567-08464-4. Farmer, Ron. 1991. Messiah, Christ. In Mills, Watson E., Bullard, Roger Aubrey, Mercer Dictionary of the Bible, Mercer University Press, ISBN 978-0-86554-373-7. Gentry, Peter R. 2008. Old Greek and Later Revisers. In Salamo, Raja, Voidala, Ansi, Jokaranta, Yuda, Scripture in Transition, Brill, ISBN 978-90-04-16582-3. Grab, Lester L. 2003. Ezra. In Dunn, James D. G., Rogerson, John William, Commentary on the Bible, Eerdmans, ISBN 978-0-8028-3711-0. Hazel, Gerhard F. 1991, Old Testament Theology, Basic Issues in the Current Debate, Eerdmans, ISBN 978-0-8028-0537-9 Harrion, Gary A. 2000. Covenant. In Friedman, David Noel, Dictionary of the Bible, Eerdmans, ISBN 978-90-5356-503-2 Jobes, Karen H., Silva, Moises 2005, Invitation to the Septuagint, Baker Academic Jones, Barry A. 2000. Canon of the Old Testament. In Friedman, David Noel, Dictionary of the Bible, William B. Eerdmans, ISBN 978-90-5356-503-2. Jewell, Donald. 2000, Christ, in Friedman, David Noel, Dictionary of the Bible, William B. Eerdmans, ISBN 978-90-5356-503-2 Lim, Timothy H. 2005. The Dead Sea Scrolls, A Very Short Introduction. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Maclay, Tim 2003, The Use of the Septuagint in New Testament Research, Eerdmans, ISBN 978-0-8028-6091-0 Miller, John W. 2004, How the Bible Came to Be, Paulist Press, ISBN 978-0-8091-4183-8 Miller, John W. 1987, Meet the Prophets, A Beginner's Guide to the Books of the Biblical Prophets, Paulist Press, ISBN 978-0-8091-4183-8 Two eight nine nine O Miller, Stephen R. nineteen ninety four, Daniel, B and H Publishing Group, ISBN O eight O five four O one one eight O Rogerson, John W. two thousand three, Deuteronomy, in Dunn, James D. G. Rogerson, John William, Commentary on the Bible, Eerdmans, ISBN nine seven eight O eight O two eight three seven one one O Salehammer, John H. nineteen ninety two, The Pentateuch as Narrative, Zondervan, ISBN O three one O five 
8 Schneiderwind, William M. 2004, How the Bible Became a Book, Cambridge, ISBN 978-0-521-53622-6 6 Sagan, J. Alberto 1987, Introduction to the Old Testament, Westminster John Knox Press, ISBN 978-0-664-22156-0 Stewart, Douglas 1987, Hosea Jonah, Thomas Nelson, ISBN 0-8499-0230-4 Worthwine, Ernst 1995, The Text of the Old Testament, An Introduction to the Biblia Hebraica, William B. Eerdmans, ISBN 978-0-8028-0788-5 Further reading Anderson, Bernhard. Understanding the Old Testament. ISBN 0-13-948399-3 Bonson, Greg, et al., Five Views on Law and Gospel Grand Rapids, Zondervan, 1993. Berkowitz, Ariel, Berkowitz, Devora, 2004, Torah Rediscovered, 4th ed., Shorsham, ISBN 0 9752914 8. Dever, William G., 2003, Who Were the Early Israelites? Grand Rapids, Michigan, William B. Eerdmans, ISBN 0 8028 0975 8. Von Rad, Gerhard, Theologie des Alten Testaments, Theology of the Old Testament in German, Band 1 2, Munich, Offlage. Hill, Andrew, Walton, John, 2000, A Survey of the Old Testament 2nd ed., Grand Rapids, Zondervan, ISBN 0-310-22903-0. Kuntz, John Kenneth 1974, The People of Ancient Israel, An Introduction to Old Testament Literature, History, and Thought, Harper and Rowe, ISBN 0-06-043822-3. Lancaster, D. Thomas 2005, Restoration, Returning the Torah of God to the Disciples of Jesus, Littleton, First Fruits of Zion. Papadaki Eklund, Stella, Byzantine Illuminated Manuscripts of the Book of Job, ISBN 978-2-503-53232-5. Rouvier, Jean-Marc Brief's Meditations sur la création du monde Brief Meditations on the Creation of the World in French, Paris, Larmatin. Salaby, Kamal 1985, The Bible Came from Arabia, London, Jonathan Cape, ISBN 0-224-02830-8. Schmid, Conrad 2012, The Old Testament, A Literary History, Minneapolis, Fortress, ISBN 978-0-8006-9775-4. Silberman, Neil A., et al., 2003, The Bible Unearthed Hardback, New York, Simon & Schuster, ISBN 0-684-86912-8, ISBN 0-684-86913-6, paperback. Sprinkle, Joseph Joe M. 2006, Biblical Law and Its Relevance, A Christian Understanding and Ethical Application for Today of the Mosaic Regulations Clothbound, Lanham, Maryland, University Press of America, ISBN 0-7618-3371-4 and ISBN 0-7618-3372-2 paperback. Topic external links Bible Gateway Full texts of the Old and New Testaments including the full Roman and Orthodox Catholic canons early Jewish writings, Tanakh Old Testament, Acritures, La Foy de Livier, archived from the original on 7 December 2010 Protestant Old Testament on a single page Old Testament, Reading Room, C.A., Tyndale Seminary. Extensive online OT resources INCL, commentaries Introduction to the Old Testament, Hebrew Bible, Yale University Old Testament. Encyclopedia.com. The Columbia Encyclopedia, 6th ed. Bible, X10 Host, Old Testament Stories and Commentary Tanakh ML Parallel Bible Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensche and the King James Version.